Hello everyone. This video is part of the Intermediate and Advanced Concepts of SAP CAP model. Uh, this is a series of videos that I'll be making. Uh, if you're new to SAP CAP model, please go through some of my previous beginner videos uh, or other online resources including CAP documentation. Uh, so in the previous video in this series, uh, we looked at how we can connect to remote services. Uh, so we built an OData service that seamlessly integrated a local service and also a remote service, uh, the Northwind service. Uh, and this is key to building extension apps on SAP BTP or any other uh, SaaS applications, uh, any other non-SAP applications as well. Uh, so in this video, we'll look at it from a different angle. Uh, here we will look at how we can consume an OData services uh, that is created by the SAP CAP programming model uh, from an external application. Uh, so specifically in this case, uh, we will look at how we can consume it from SAP AppKyver. Uh, SAP AppKyver is a low-code, no-code tool offering from SAP. So basically, uh, what I'm interested in is, uh, I'm interested in how an authenticated CAP endpoint, uh, OData service endpoint, uh, can be consumed by an external application. Okay, so here I have, uh, let me sh uh, go to the code and show my application first. Uh, it's a very simple application right here that I have. Uh, so in my schema.cds, I only have two entities, uh, employees and departments. And there is a one-to-many relationship between departments and employees. Uh, so there is that one-to-many relationship. And then I have the uh, service uh, uh, document uh, where I'm exposing both the departments and the employees as OData services. Uh, now there is one other thing that I've added to this uh, service and that is authentication and authorization. Uh, so I have the annotation at requires uh, so I need an authenticated user and I've also have some restrictions as well so you have to be the in the admin role in order to do any kind of uh, CRUD operations and this applies to both departments and employees. Uh, if I look at my xsecurity.json file, uh, I have uh, defined a role collection, a uh, basic cap admin. And this role collection is, a, a role collection is nothing but a collection of roles. Uh, so here in this uh, role collection, uh, this gives the uh, admin role to this role collection. So basically, once I deploy the app, I need to give myself uh, this role collection. So the user is assigned this role collection uh, in order to see the app and uh, use the app. Uh, so I've deployed this app. So it's a very simple app. I will uh, leave the GitHub repository in the video description. Um, so once you deploy this app uh, in my SAP BTP platform, uh, you can see that there are three apps that are deployed. Uh, so if I go into my mta.yaml file here, uh, you will see that there are three modules. Uh, there is the basic CAP. Uh, this is the app router module. Uh, this is the Node.js, the OData service module, and the deployer module. Now, the deployer module itself, its job is very limited. Uh, what it does is uh, it creates the database artifacts uh, and then initializes any data, and then it stops. So that's why you see that the deployer app is uh, already stopped. Uh, now, you have the app router uh, file here, uh, application right here, and then you have the OData service application that is right here. Now, the way you can get access to the OData service is through the app router. So, uh, if I click on this app router right here, and if I click on this link here, uh, you can see that if I go into the service slash demo path, uh, then you can see that it shows me the service document, and then I can also see the metadata document. And I can also reach the metadata document right here. Now, if I go directly to the um, OData service endpoint, uh, so if I go to the OData service endpoint directly, uh, then you will see that I get, uh, if I try to, uh, go to the departments uh, file, you will see that I get an unauthorized error um, because uh, I don't have uh, the proper uh, the chart token to say that I have uh, the uh, admin role. Uh, whereas here, uh, if I go into this, um, where is my other uh, instance? If I go in here and if I go to the employees, 
uh, then you can see the data. And this is uh, when I go through the app router, you can see that I can get the data. Uh, but whereas when I go through the uh, OData service endpoint, uh, then I get the unauthorized error. So <clears throat> basically, uh, we have two endpoints. Uh, so we have the app router endpoint. And then we also have the CAP or data service endpoint. Uh, the uh, app router, uh, you you can uh, uh, get access to the uh, the data. So uh, there is an inbuilt mechanism uh, to uh, to get the access token uh, using uh, token using XS UAA server. Uh, so there is inbuilt mechanism, and that's why the app router is able to go get the data. Uh, whereas when you access the CAP O data service uh, directly, uh, you cannot reach it because there is no inbuilt mechanism to get the access token uh, using the Access UAA server. Okay, um, so now um, I want to uh, consume this O data service. Uh, this uh, OData service uh, from an external application. So I want to build a completely, maybe a React application or a, a Vue.js application, or in this case, an SAP AppGyver uh, application, and I want to consume this OData service. Uh, so how do I go about doing this? Because this endpoint is going to be restricted. Uh, there is, uh, you need authentication to get to this endpoint. Uh, now we can do this uh, by creating a destination. Uh, now, so we already know what the destination is in SAP um, uh, BTP. Uh, so here we can go in here and we can create a destination. Uh, now, when we create a destination, um, the first thing is so uh, we are. Uh, so I cl click on create destination. And here I have the URL. I need to specify the URL. So the question is, uh, what endpoint should I use? Uh, should I use the endpoint, the app router endpoint, or should I use the CAP or data service endpoint? Um, so we know that CAP router has the inbuilt mechanism. And also, if I go into my uh, app itself, uh, so here I have the app router in the mta.yaml file. And you see that uh, once I get the access token, I can forward this. There is the forward authentication token uh, true. Uh, so this will forward the token to the OData service endpoint. Uh, and that's how you are able to access the data from the OData service endpoint. So in a way, you'll be tempted uh, to use the app router endpoint uh, when creating the destination. Uh, but uh, this is incorrect. Uh, what you should do, though, is you should use the CAP or data service endpoint. Uh, now, you may be wondering uh, that the CAP or data service, uh, hey, that requires an access token. Uh, there is no built-in mechanism to get the access token. So how do we use that endpoint, right? Uh, so you may be wondering that. Uh, so the answer is simple. So even though there is no inbuilt mechanism, uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot programmatically initiate the OAuth2 flow and get the access token. Uh, so we need to initiate this OAuth2 flow and get the access token and then call this endpoint. Uh, so how do we programmatically initiate this OAuth2 flow? Uh, so here, uh, we really don't have to write any code. Um, I mean, there are many ways to do it, but most applications or frameworks, uh, they do the job for you. Uh, so here in this uh, destination, uh, we can, uh, instead of uh, no authentication, uh, we can choose the option OAuth2 chart bearer. And then the SAP BTP will initiate the OAuth2 flow for you and get the uh, access token for you. Uh, but let's uh, look at Postman first uh, before jumping into creating this uh, destination uh, here. Uh, so if, let's see how we can get the access token ourselves using Postman. So here um, I have Postman uh, here in, uh, installed on my local machine. Uh, so here I've created a, uh, an environment. Uh, and if I go into my AppGyver configuration, uh, so here um, I have the base URL. Uh, and uh, I have a username. Uh, but these are the key values, the client ID and the secret. Uh, 
Um, and then the token URL is going to be specific to your environment, uh, but for the most part, it will follow this kind of uh, a syntax. Um, so you will have your region uh, slash OAuth slash token, and then uh, this is going to be your sub account. So you will have a similar syntax, uh, but make sure you have the proper uh, URL for your token URL. And your authorization URL is also going to be very similar to your token URL, except uh, the word authorize and the token is uh, different right here. Uh, so you have your token URL and your auth URL. So these are two inf important information that you need. And then you also need the client ID and the secret. And the client ID and the secret, uh, you can get them from your uh, application itself uh, so if you go into your application you go into your environment variables right here and then you have the access uaa service and here you have uh, the client id and then your client secret uh, so go into uh, either your app router or your odata's cap service endpoint uh, these values will be the same for both the uh, cap uh, so the go data service and also the app router. So uh, make sure you copy this client ID and the client secret and uh, uh, use that here in your um, environment variable. So now you have uh, the token URL, the client secret, the client ID, and the authorization URL. Uh, so uh, get all that information, those four important information. And then what you can do is uh, uh, here in your uh, app giver, uh, I, I've created a collection called AppGyver. Um, so initially, I'm going to, uh, uh, at the collection level itself, let me show you how we can get the um, the access token. Uh, so definitely what you want to do is you want to initiate the OAuth 2.flow. Uh, so you select o OAuth 2.flow here. And then, um, and then there will be a button here to configure a new token. So click on that button to configure a new token. You can give any name here you want uh, for the token name. Uh, the grant type, and this is important, for the grant type, you want to choose authorization code. Um, so we don't use authorization code with Pixie, uh, but uh, th this is a little bit more secure. Uh, but here, in our case, we are just going to use authorization code. Uh, and then uh, you can, I'll just use uh, localhost 5000, because in my app itself, uh, I have used uh, localhost 5000 as one of the redirect URIs. Um, so because I've used it, I can use the uh, callback URL as uh, localhost 5000. And here you just put in all these uh, values that we already looked at, the auth URL, the token URL, client ID, and the client secret. Now we can say get new access token, and it's going to get a new access token and um, so the OAuth flow was completely handled by Postman. And here we now have this uh, access token. Uh, and let's quickly have a look at this access token. So I copy this access token right here. And what I can do is I can look at the values in this access token. So I can go into chart.io. And I can paste this uh, token right here. And you can see that it has all my uh, values here. I have all these roles. I have all these role collections, but the role collection that I'm mostly interested in is uh, basic cap admin. And you can see that in my scope, uh, in my role collection, I have uh, these uh, this role. Uh, so so this is good for me. Uh, so that means I can access uh, the OData service. Uh, so here, what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll delete the previous ones. Uh, I'll use this token. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, this is my metadata. Uh, I'm trying to get the metadata document and I'm using the endpoint, the cap or data service endpoint. And, and here if I say send, uh, if all goes well, I should get the metadata document. So this is working. Uh, so as long as I use the O data service endpoint uh, and I use the OAuth2 flow uh, using the authorization code, I plug in all my four values. These are the four values that you are uh, that you need to know. And I can get uh, my metadata document. Uh, let's see what happens if I use the app router endpoint with the same token, right? Uh, so I'm using the same token, same credentials, everything. Uh, but here, if I do it, uh, this is not going to work. Uh, this is going to redirect me to get another chart token. And this is not what we want. 
Okay, so lesson learned is uh, that we want to use the O data service endpoint. Uh, so let's see how we can do this uh, in our uh, in our uh, uh, SAP BTP destination itself. Uh, so here I go into my SAP BTP destination and I've created a destination already. So I'll just simply use that destination. Let me cancel this first. Okay, so here I have uh, the destination. Uh, you can give any name you want. Uh, the type is going to be HTTP. And this is the URL. And notice uh, there is the dash SRV, uh, which means it's pointing to my, uh, pointing to the destination of my, uh, uh, of my OData service endpoint. So if I go into my overview, uh, so this is the, you can see there's the dash SRV. So this, I'm not using the app router, uh, but I'm using the um, uh, the O data service endpoint, and I'm also uh, appending the path uh, slash service slash demo here as well, uh, so that this URL points directly to the service document. In some cases, you don't have to point it to the service document if you're, at, in, but in your app, you would have to, in in the external app that you're building, you will have to specify the path. Uh, but in this case, I've uh, given the entire path. Uh, so that uh, this points directly to the service document. And here for the authentication, I need to choose OAuth to chart bearer. Uh, so uh, we definitely want to choose this. Um, and then you provide your client ID and your client secret. And this you can get from the environment variable. And this is my token service URL. Uh, so this is going to be different based on your region and also your sub account. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is my token service URL. Uh, one other thing you need to do is uh, the additional properties you want to uh, set AppGyver enabled to true because uh, uh, we are going to consume this destination from AppGyver and you also want to set the HTML5 dynamic destination to true as well. Uh, so you set this uh, and you um, uh, create the destination uh, with this values. Now um, when we go to uh, I wanted to show one other thing real quick is uh, if I go to my cap uh, data document, uh, let me uh, delete the console here. Uh, so we've already gotten the chart token. And then when I uh, run this, this is going to get the metadata file. And if I look in my console itself, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the, uh, the request header, it sends the bearer along with the token. So this is the token that we that we checked in uh, uh, the chart.io website and you can we saw that this has the basic uh, cap admin role and so on so it's being sent uh, in the header uh, with the authorization tag uh, and using bearer okay um, so we have the destination destination looks uh, good to me uh, now we go into uh, AppGyver itself. Uh, so let me close this AppGyver. So uh, make sure that you're using the SAP BTP AppGyver and not the Community Edition AppGyver. Uh, the Community Edition AppGyver will not have support for uh, destinations, SAP BTP destinations. Uh, so here I go into the AppGyver. I'm opening an app. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about AppGyver here, but here, if you go into this uh, data, uh, this is where you can create a data resource. Uh, many types of data resources are available, and one of them is uh, a destination from SAP BTP. Uh, so I can click on this uh, uh, button here, and this is going to get the data resource from the SAP BTP. Uh, so it has uh, gotten all the all of the destinations that are configured in SAP BTP. And this is the destination that I'm concerned about. So I click on this and what it's doing is uh, it's using that destination, getting the OAuth, uh, the destination is uh, initiating the OAuth to flow, uh, getting the access token, and then we are able to get the employees and the data. So it's uh, getting all the data here. Uh, and uh, now we can even browse data and get some data as well. Okay, um, so this is how you would uh, go ahead and uh, consume your O data service uh, from uh, SAP AppGyver. Uh, so you need to create a destination, and the destination you can create uh, using the OAuth to uh, chart bearer. Okay, see you in the next uh, video.